Alright guys, Stashcover here back again today, hope you're all enjoying your Monday. Today I wanted to discuss some team news in advance of London in the upcoming weekend and also for the rest of the season itself. Talking mainly around Toronto Ultra, said that a little bit wrong but you get what I mean. And also a couple of the amateur teams as well, some pretty important stuff going into of course some amateur events that we're going to have at the home stands around the world over the next couple of months. Like if you guys enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate it, subscribe if you're new as always. Let's just hop right into it then. So these are the eight teams we're going to have in London next weekend where I'll be attending. If you guys are coming, feel free to join my discord in the link in the description box below so we can organize some sort of you know so we can party up and watch the games together i say party up like we're in an xbox chat uh, but anyway paris legion new york subliners dallas empire seattle surge chicago huntsman los angeles gorillas royal ravens of course are going to be playing toronto in their first game and to potentially some team changes in terms of substitute swaps have come out for the toronto ultra not yet announced as of when this video is being recorded but definitely kind of likely as to what we're going through in the coming minutes so just first of all saw this on twitter which was kind of funny T J Halley replying to Caesar, Cesar, whatever, Skies, um, talking about the Super Bowl, right? Because, of course, that happened yesterday. Kansas City Chiefs, I think, ended up winning. But it was on too late for me to really watch. But uh, he says, any bets on today's game? I got 49ers. TJ says, at Cod League. Because the rumor is that they're not allowed to play money tens, right? They're not allowed to do any gambling or any type of that and anything related to the league. So TJ's just having a bit of a joke around that. But it's kind of interesting the amount of restrictions that the CDL and Activision do put on their players to the point where even stuff like this is starting to bring up some uh, some activity here around the Twitter sphere. Um, not something you would really expect, but you know, whatever. I, you know, they're not going to have any rules against stuff like this. It's just uh, for money tens and gambling on Call of Duty as a game. They're not allowed to do unless they're in an official event. I guess then it's not considered gambling or whatever. There's an event going on in Charlotte, so AGN events from Total Advantage or Total Advantage have picked up Mosh John. So this, is, of course, is interesting, right? This is John Jonathan Perez, um, the former world champion of course back in the Black Ops 3 days he's not going to be able to play this season for rumours that we talked about a while ago but haven't really ever been confirmed Nelson this guy called Huntsman I don't know exactly know who that is and Prodigy as well so an interesting team February 8th to 9th this coming weekend in Charlotte that's an event that you guys could keep your eyes on in addition to the London event of course then we have this from yesterday so the 1k finished up UIU ended up winning it against Parasite Delo Draza Performal and Y Optimum this looks like it could be Parasite's new team very interesting given he talked about how he was leaving the old team team of Pharaoh, Nagafen and whatever, which is crazy to think about those big names. He's swapping out for guys that really, I think, Performal I've heard of, and maybe D'Lo. The rest of the guys I'm really not familiar with, so if you guys have some interesting uh, insight on them, feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. As always, this was how it finished up then, so Pentagram, Zyral, Emery's, Infamous and Rex, the team that it has been for a while now. I think Emery's joined when Tish left to join the Dallas Empire as their substitute, but uh, yeah, so Parasite, the second place team every other team kind of falling down the standings pretty significantly here so a decent result for Parasite's first outing and this is the rumour so thanks to Jonathan for pointing this out to me on Twitter Parasite, Ferro, Space Lee, Spartan, and Prolete have split up Ferro says he's found a new team I'll show the clip in just a second here assuming Parasite will go on to join that team that he was just on Spartan and Prolete have both announced their free agents nothing on Space Lee as yet so very interesting it wasn't Nagafen by the way I was making that up that was a different team that was the Nagafen exotic team that uh, Parzell on left that we talked about I think yesterday so this is a clip I'll just play for you guys it's only a real short one Ferry just talks about on stream that he's got a team uh, lined up and he's looking forward to scrimming I got a I got a new team brother start uh, scrimming and stuff tomorrow so let's move into this main story of today, talking around Toronto Ultra and exactly what they should do with their team and an interesting predicament, I guess, that they are in. So, of course, they're the only team, as far as I'm aware, to get 10 players on board. I think that part of their thought process may have been that they could have five players as their main roster that they go into tournaments with, and then the other five could be an academy team that they then send around to the amateur tournaments. That's not how it works. You can only have two of your substitutes on the academy team. The rest of the squad had to be filled up with the rest of the players. So I don't even think they're using a academy squads they just have those other five players to potentially scrim against their main team practice search and destroy some kind of good ideas in theory to keep like potential search and destroy ideas and strategies hidden from the outside world because they can scrim each other kind of a cool concept but maybe not exactly what they were planning it to be so they have 10 players on board and of course they have the five-man team that played in um you know minnesota this past weekend and that five-man team is as follows so the team was methods looney classic cami and metals that was a five-man squad they went into the 
rest of the team, of course, Brack, Lucky, Kleenex, Benjamin Bantz, and Mayhem. So an interesting 10-man squad they picked up. From my estimation, Methods and Looney were always going to be a starting two. That made perfect sense, having Looney as the kind of IGL and Methods as that really consistent assault rifle. The rest of the guys, in my opinion, was completely up in the air. They went for Classic, who honestly proved to be a pretty decent player over the weekend. Cami was fine as well, and Metals played pretty damn well at times also. So... You know, that was their five-man team. They didn't have necessarily the best result on the weekend. They lost to Minnesota Rocker 3-1, to but they did beat Seattle Surge. And, you know, it showed some pretty decent, comfortable performances in the Game 5. The question is, of course, this is the uh, roster that they started with. This is what Brack tweets out the other day. Scrimming OGLA. So this isn't the main team scrimming. This is the Academy team, or like the second team, I guess, scrimming Obza Gaming Los Angeles. Hashtag Brackpack come watch. Group B welcoming Metals to the squad. Metals is not playing on London and um, you know nothing else is talked about that Brack, Lucky and Metals the best players on the team on the bench absolutely surreal so this is very intriguing it seems like Metals now nothing confirmed as yet has been dropped off the starting roster down to the secondary roster and who is being promoted in his place that's right Benjamin Bantz so really intriguing stuff here is this a decision, if it is confirmed, that you guys agree with? Which direction would you have gone with it? So I managed to nab this from his uh, stream. I'll leave this link down below if you guys would like to check it out and go and, um, you know, watch uh, some of the games where they scrimmed up to gaming Los Angeles. But here we go, we can see that Toronto Brack, Metals, Kleenex, Mayhem and Lucky are the players, you know, they have some decent kills and they actually managed to win this one 250 to 244 against Optic Gaming Los Angeles. But regardless, very interesting, right? Metals, after having a decent performance in that opening weekend, and let's just have a look at this. So, Intel Call of Duty, of course, tweets about it, did Bantz get promoted to the main team? Metals is currently scrimming with the B team in place of him. Stats of the launch weekend in Minnesota. So let me get this on the big screen right here. Um, here we go. So, Methods, of course, the main assault rifle you're expecting him to put up decent numbers indeed he does a 1.22 kd right back to the kind of form we saw from him in the world war ii season then we've got metals at a 1.07 so second best here as the flex on the team pretty damn good performances and honestly putting in a putting up a clinic at times looney was the worst performing player but then again he's kind of that entry smg in a way and has a, has a different role on the team instead of just being an individual player but it seems like when you look at this kind of statistics maybe metals isn't the guy you just drop out for a Benjamin Bantz. Maybe in terms of team chemistry and whatever, maybe he might mesh better with Cami or whatever. That is a decision they've tried to take. But a very interesting one to consider, right? Because, of course, um, yeah, these are the results, for example, of Brack in the final season. And some other players, as there were some individuals talking about on Twitter, like Lucky, for example, was, was great last season, as was Metals. You've seen some of these other players that are still on the starting roster. Is that the way to go? You know, they don't get too many of these weekend events. You've got to try and put out the best team you can. Not going for these players is a pretty interesting decision and I really do wonder how they are coming to these decisions because over at Toronto Ultra all you have in terms of the coaching staff is Marky B it's not like you're looking at a London or you're looking at a Paris when there's a lot of guys behind the team you look at London you've got Shane you've got uh, Joe you've got Dominate all those guys related to coaching so you've got the head coach the strategic coach like assistant coach all of those roles over at Paris as well you've got B-Sport Josh you've got um, you know, OP, OP2 Joel whatever his name is exactly I forget exactly what he was called um, but regardless they've got two guys over there then you go over and look at Opti Gaming you've got Marog as the general manager and then you've got uh, Pac-Man as the coach and a lot of teams you'll see this you've got a general manager then you've got a coach in the case of uh, Toronto Ultra not only does he have more work in his hands essentially Marky B but you know there's no real one else around him because he was the strategic coach that's what I always thought was interesting he was announced as the strategic coach can't even say that strategic coach there we go um for the Toronto Ultra and at the time, myself included, we were like, you know, who's going to be the main coach, right? If you're a strategic coach, you're not the main coach, you would assume. But no one else has joined the Toronto Ultra, and it really makes it a difficult position for Marky B to deal with all these players. He's got 10 players to deal with. They're scrimming simultaneously. How do you, as a coach that's meant to help out, you know, manage where your players are going to go on each team, watch one set of scrims, watch another set of scrims, and then decide between them which player is going to get swapped out? Of course, they didn't have the best result in the first weekend. The only real thing that you can imagine to do is make some sort of changes before the next weekend. Is this the right change? Who really knows? But it's an interesting precedent to set, given that... The only Spanish player that was on this team, now Looney is, I think, Mexican, so Daniel Loza is his name, so he definitely had that yeah, backing behind him that he could potentially get on with the Spanish guys. But it's got to be said, Metals dropped to 1.1 KD right here, 
now he's been dropped onto the bench. Does that set a precedent that, look, they don't want to go down this route of the Spanish-English-speaking combination, and maybe that's messing with their chemistry to some degree? Mittles and Lucky were great players last season, and Mittles is continuing, see, continuing to be at least a very solid player on this Toronto Ultra squad, but it must be said that given they've gone down the route of putting Bants in instead of Mittles, maybe that cultural aspect is something they're really considering, and they've decided to keep the UK guys on board. Of course, then you've got the question of Brack, right? Just as we were looking at here, this was his performances in the very last season during the Black Ops 4 days, and honestly, it was pretty fantastic. So Black Ops 3 didn't really, or uh, World War 2 even, didn't really do much here, but then he got onto this Midnight Esports team, and he really was the standout player along with Envoy at that team at the start of the season. Had some good results in the early part of the Pro League. Then he got on to Accelerate when all that drama went down about Midnight and then, you know, trying to force them. I think it was K2, the guy's name, K2 at Midnight, trying to force them to sign contracts so that Midnight could sell them onto franchise teams for big buyouts, effectively. Um, that didn't really go down well. It forced the team to break up, went on to Accelerate, didn't exactly have the best experience over there with some of the, you know, scummy ownership and all of that that was going on with Accelerate Gaming at the time as well. Um, then he went on to Denial, of course, very interesting few months he had on Denial and, and units with this team. They didn't really have too much success, even though they did show some promise at times. Then he got his big shot onto Luminosity Gaming alongside Skies that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Had a few games. Honestly, this this team, we kind of expected it to maybe be better than it was. In terms of Assault Rifle lines, it was pretty deadly, but they didn't really get too much going apart from that. Top 6 of playoffs was pretty much the best they managed to do. But going into the season, people had a lot of promise around Brack. They're thinking, okay, where is he going to go in terms of a starting lineup? But there was the other side of the argument saying that Brack is he's a big kill whore. He doesn't play particularly the objective that much. And, uh, you know, he definitely, his stats were artificially inflated in the way he was playing the game. Quite a lot of players came out and said that. Maybe that's just because he's a new player coming into the scene and established players want to try and make excuses why he's putting up better numbers than they are. That's possible, but maybe that's only one part of the story, and there may be some truth into what they were saying, and that may be coming out with whoever behind the scenes is making these decisions. Whether this is down to Looney, though, I would imagine he's got a pretty big impact here. If you're Mark EB, you can't rely on your own gut instinct just to make all these decisions. You've got to rely on the individual players, and Looney, of course, kind of being that IGL figure, I would imagine that he's taken a pretty key role here in deciding who's on the team. But Brack, has he been snubbed to the main team? We'll have to see exactly what comes out. But will Methods, Looney, Classic, Cammy, and Bance, if that is the five-man team be any better than the Mittles iteration? Personally, I doubt it, but we'll have to see, because Bantz, I guess, will be on home soil, as will Cami. Maybe that'll make a difference. And let's not forget what Bantz we saw at uh, Birmingham a couple of years ago in the 2018 World War II season. Maybe that is part of the reasoning behind this. Uh, just a couple of things before we finish then. So this kind of joke um, that uh, Colton points out to me here related to the COD League. Five versus five flag football tournament. Which COD League team is coming out on top? Uh, Crim6 replies with this and silly O-line or online? talking about, you know, um, Empire didn't have such a good result on LAN. And then this final clip just to finish with then. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching as always. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time.